It's interesting this afternoon, Bitcoin at 5 p.m. this afternoon, um, things are going to hit the hit the wall and hit the fan. And it's going to be exciting if you're watching Reddit. The Reddit community um, is really excited about 5 p.m. this afternoon because that's when um, we are going to see, we could potentially see an explosion in Bitcoin price. Um, as at 5 p.m. officially in El Salvador, Bitcoin becomes legal tender. And the country now holds 400 Bitcoins which is currently worth $21 million. The president there said that the counties will continue to buy more. They're going to continue to buy them up. And what's going to happen is they're going to dole out like $30 in Bitcoin to every citizen like that this afternoon. So in solidarity with El Salvador, all of these people on Reddit, they're saying, you know what? We're going to buy $30 worth of Bitcoin. So the, the Reddit community is, maybe this is like the new you know, GameStop. Maybe it's the new uh, uh, AMC. So watch for a huge Bitcoin spike. And this is on top of the fact that over the weekend, Bitcoin hit $52,000. And it's hovering around 50, 51 at this hour, 51, 52, but it keeps bouncing back and forth. So this afternoon, I, I, I mean, I'm expecting Bitcoin to have a nice big bounce. The value of Bitcoin jumped about 1.4, 1.5% um, yesterday. Um, and again, the official date for El Salvador to adopt the Bitcoin along with the U.S. dollar as legal tender for all exchanges there. Um, the, you know, it's interesting to see like the Bitcoin subreddit uh, and see how excited they are about this. I mean, I think this is a real watershed moment to commemorate El Salvador's law, making it legal tender. Um, if you think about how this currency could lift millions out of poverty, you know, they're in a country where their current currency is worthless, the Bolivar. So they turn to the U.S. dollar, which is obviously we're seeing what's going on with the U.S. dollar. But what would you rather have? You know, what well, would you rather you know, have, Bitcoin or the U.S. dollar? And the thing is, like, the U.S. government can't manipulate it. So if they put sanctions on people or stuff like that, that would they that would not hurt them like it would if it was the U.S. dollar. Yeah, that's a great point. Yeah, we can put U.S. sanctions on the country, but but when you've got Bitcoin in its place, hey, do what you want. I saw one woman, she ran uh, like an ice cream stand and they were interviewing her, Vice News was interviewing her and, and she said, you know, I, I use the Bitcoin for my savings, but I use the currency here, the cash for transactions. But she's like, yeah, I, I you know, I put my, 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 my savings in Bitcoin. So I've been able to save money now. Imagine, like it's the opposite of what our federal government thinks is when they give a stimulus or some sort of help to the American people, like for heaven forbid that you should actually save some money. Well, and think about it. I mean, it could be if, if they adopted Bitcoin as the Petro trade, you know, like if that's what they started trading oil in, that would crash our U S dollar. So, I mean, that's even, you know, because these countries are going to see, the success, like El Salvador is going to be a, a litmus test. If they see success mm -hmm. with this, then they might be like a starting adopting it all over the world. And then it could become the what's, what oil is traded in. And then once that happens, the dollar is going to crash. So we're going to want to have some kind of alternative currency. Well, and I think and, and I'm going to get to this part of the story a little bit in a minute here about what the Fed, what our government's doing right now, which I, I mentioned kind of at the top of the show. I mean, they're trying to, again, you know, in hockey terms, they're 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 skating to where the puck was like 10 years ago instead of where the puck is going. Um, so I think you're, you're seeing, and I've said this before, I really think it's exciting to see what some of these hate, for lack of a better term, like third world countries can do with this. I mean, today is going to be a real eyes on the, you know, eyes on El Salvador moment to see what happens. Imagine this country is completely transformed as a result of this. You're already seeing it in some of their beach communities where they've already adopted Bitcoin Beach in El Salvador. They've already implemented it. They were implementing it months ago. And remember, they don't have to pay transaction taxes on this. So unlike in the United States where we treat Bitcoin as property, here they're not treating it that way at all. They're treating it as currency. And here's uh, the take on this Bitcoin beach. The donor wanted to remain anonymous. He, he didn't want any credit for things. He wants to see Bitcoin uh, used in real ways. He doesn't want to give the organizations that are just going to convert it to fiat. And, you know, they as an organization really believe that most of the benefit of what they're trying to do would be by seeding Bitcoin economies throughout the world. That's when Peterson drafted a plan to create a Bitcoin That's crazy. economy. Think about and that. And recruited a small staff of El Zonte residents. We had a timeline 
and we're at like year three right now when we're only you know halfway you know 18 months into it. Part of that was kind of sped up by the, the pandemic of all things. When El Salvador's tourism industry and El Zonte's economy collapsed, Peterson started making monthly transfers of about $35 in Bitcoin to 500 families around town. Uh, during that time, you know, people couldn't go out of their homes to work. A lot of people were starting to go hungry. And so we kind of used some of the resources we had to start sending Bitcoin to the majority of the families in El Zante and teaching the stores how to accept Bitcoin, which helped the, the stores to be able to you know, stay in business and keep their employees uh, on, but it also allowed the, the people to, to remain fed. Maria Del Carmen, the owner of a tiny pizza eatery, says she was skeptical about storing money on her phone. Now, Bitcoin accounts for as much as half of her roughly $45 a day in sales. Y luego este fui viendo la ganancia de de Bitcoin y ahora pues siento de que la la moneda virtual es algo pues muy muy efectivo y por eso yo pienso de que las personas que no conocen de de Bitcoin deberían de empezar a a ver si pueden este intentarlo también como lo intenté yo. Great, huh? So wow. today, it's amazing to see this. A bread you know. maker. Yeah, a pizza maker, bread maker. Or, yeah. Making making Bitcoin sales. <laughs> I mean, in El Salvador, you're going to see, I mean, this is, this is transformative. I mean, you're watching history. I mean, I don't want to put too fine a point on it, but this is, this is a historical moment. Now, the International Monetary Fund, for their part, the IMF, of course, the old dinosaur, uh, is uh, you know thinks that it's rife with problems, et cetera, and, and adoption issues and other things. Uh, but uh, they're part of the old dinosaur regime, and they're gonna you know they're gonna collapse under their weight. So, well, and and also you you would know like in my like just as an outsider, like I don't really know a lot about it yet, but like it seems like inflation would also not be effect in effect. So you would be getting that pizza for. You know, like imagine if you went and got a pizza in the seventies, you could have got a pizza for a dollar that is now twenty dollars. Right. You know? So so like the the exchange like is that yeah. gonna be well, it's going to be interesting to see how it affects inflation. I mean, you know, I, to me, inflation is a supply and demand thing, right? And right. so you know, and I don't know. It's going to be fascinating to see how it affects inflation. I mean, here here you're talking about Bitcoin as a def, you know, it's an asset that can't it can't be debased as a currency, right? It can't be printed. There only 21 million will ever exist. You can't print more of them. Uh, and unlike the U.S. dollar, and the real question is, it comes down to scarcity of like of goods. And if you have people who are, you know, are we're adopting this currency worldwide, and they they see the value in it, because what is a currency? It's what we place value in. It's like why do we care about gold? It's because we deem it valuable. Uh, it, otherwise, it has no intrinsic value other than what human beings say it. You know, it it it, it means or what value humans say it has. Same with Bitcoin. Same with the U.S. dollar. I mean, what is the U.S. dollar backed by? Nothing. Air. So I think it's exciting to see worldwide, like a worldwide, it's almost like a Star Trek currency. <laughs> you know, it's like, mm -hmm. this is the currency of the world. This is, this is it. This is the future. Now we can get in arguments whether it's, you know, going to be Ethereum or it's going to be other something else will come along and kind of uproot Bitcoin. But this is the first one of the game. It has the most uh, has the most brand recognition as a as a, as an asset, as an asset class. And and we'll see. I mean, but again, thirty dollars in Bitcoin today. They're going to give them their ID numbers, and they will get thirty dollars. Um, it's really exciting. Um, of course, the learning curve for for using Bitcoin um, is has to be overcome by a lot of Salvadorans who are skeptical about it. But if the government intends to make this work, and they're giving out thirty dollars and they're doing massive outreach programs, and the president of that country is doing the same thing, and they're they're saving the citizens millions in financial fees by sending money to family abroad, which they do. I mean, think about that: the the Salvadorans who work in other parts of the world who are sending money back to their family. Now they don't have to go to like, I don't know, Western Union or some other BS place and send and pay all these transaction fees. You know, this is why this is empowering. So they can send money back to their family in, in a millisecond. And they don't have to pay some, I don't know, you know, some of those like check cashing places and all that kind of garbage, which is what they do. And now they can do it and not have to worry about that. I think it's, I think it's incredible.
Uh, it's going to be interesting to see that what happens on the United States side. Um, and as uh, as the U.S. government is continued their worries about uh, about this. I love this headline. Crypto's rapid move into banking elicits alarm in Washington. BlockFi. It's a, an exchange that I use. It was started by the Winklevoss twins. It's a fast growing financial startup. It, it's really sleek. I really like it a lot. Um, but you have like, well, what happens now if more people are starting to use BlockFi than they are traditional banks? No wonder you have, you have federal officials right now who are coming out saying they're warning about the financial services industry is in some cases vulnerable to hackers and fraud. And they're relying on risky innovations. So they're, you know, they're trying to get out in front of this, basically say, hey, you be really be careful, really be careful. You should just continue to use banks and, and the Federal Reserve System and the, and, the, and the corrupt banking system in the U.S. Go ahead and continue to use our system. You know, in recent months, top officials from the Federal Reserve and other banking regulators have urgently begun what they're calling a crypto sprint to try to catch up with the rapid changes and figure out how to curb the potential dangers from an emerging industry whose short history has been marked by as much high-stakes speculation as by technological advances. Gary Gensler, I love this, the chairman of the SEC, says, we need additional authorities to prevent transactions, products, and platforms from falling between regulatory cracks. You know, Elizabeth Warren also says, we also need more resources to protect investors in this growing and volatile sector. So what does that mean? What, that, what does that mean? It means they're scared. It, it means the old dinosaurs are scared. They're also worried about stable coins, which are, of course, coins that are backed by the U.S. dollar in a one for one. You know, why would I put my money in a U.S. dollar if I could actually have it in a currency or I could put it in a stable coin like GUSD or uh, staked Ethereum or some other stable coin? It's backed by the U.S. dollar one for one, but it also is getting a 15 to 20 percent rate of return by it being staked. It's well, not liquid for me. I mean, that's amazing, right? I, I think it's just because they know that it, the, if if the world adopts Bitcoin, if the world adopts an alternative currency to the dollar for oil and other stuff, they know that their gravy train is over and they lose control. Those, if you want to control yeah. people, control the money. And right yeah. now they can control the money. They, if we take the control out of yeah. there, that'd be a great way, you know, for us to, you know, imagine if we if we had more control over what they got. Yeah, imagine that, right? I love the, 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 I don't know if you heard the comments from Chairman Powell, the Federal Reserve Chief. He said, he says, you know, I'm, I'm you know, the, the proliferation of these so called stable coins, these digital currencies whose value, uh, you know, whose value is, um, is held, who, whose value is typically pegged to the dollar and are frequently used in digital money transfers and other transactions like lending. And he said, Fed and other central banks study whether to issue digital currencies of their own. And they have concerns about these stable coins. Mr. Powell has pointed to the proliferation of so-called stable coins and said that uh, he doesn't like the fact that uh, they're pegged to the U.S. dollar and are frequently, frequently used in digital money transfers and other transactions like lending. Quoting him now, he says, we have a tradition in this country. This is my favorite. We have a tradition in this country. I'm trying to get my... There we go. We have a tradition in this country where, you know, where the public's money is held in what is supposed to be a very safe asset, Powell said. <laughs> that doesn't exist really for stable coins. Okay, let's just be clear about something. Stable coins are backed by the U.S. dollar in a one-for-one -one relationship. And they're all on top of which they're getting incredible rates of return because you're staking that currency allowing others to use it for to borrow and to and for liquidity purposes but you you know it's not liquid at the time you need it. you need to stake it for 6 months uh, 12 months etc so he's worried about he's worried about the he's worried about stable coins yeah well and it's not like about the US dollar huh it's like these these people are like you know my asset my boat my yacht is worth 20 million of these US dollars, but it's not even worth like a half a Bitcoin. It's like, 
you know, like their assets are worth a lot less if they lose that dollar. Like they're just like, oh my gosh, we, like, like think of that. Think of all the assets that would just completely uh, be way undervalued for those people if if we move to a cryptocurrency. Yeah, and well, I, I, that and I love the hypocrisy of these these guys. Like Elizabeth Warren says, crypto is the new shadow bank. It provides many of the same services, but without the consumer protections or financial stability that back up traditional <laughs> systems. So she, is she basically trying to associate it with the dark web? You know what I mean? Like right. get people thinking that it's that negative. It's a dark web thing. Yeah, she goes on to say, it's like spinning straw into gold. Oh, I'm sorry. You mean like what we do with the U.S. dollar? It's like spit. It's like spinning straw into gold, which actually would be fantastic. Yeah. So what you're you saying is backed by labor, right? It's backed by labor, and gold is a is is a is an asset that's never going anywhere. It's an actual physical thing. So you're you're telling me that when we do all of this coding and we create Bitcoin and that becomes gold, that's wonderful. Thank mm -hmm. you. So what what happens with the U.S. dollar? We print as much of it as we want, and it's not backed by anything. It's not even backed by gold. So yeah, great. If it's well, and, it like spinning straw into gold, that sounds fantastic to me. And everybody says they print, but it's like all they do is go in a computer and add a few more zeros. They're not even printing at all, are they? No, <laughs> no, man. What? They're not even printing. It's all just digital now. Yeah. But we need to be worried about crypto. You know, crypto is the new shadow bank. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, look, I want regulation in that space. I think it, in, in many ways it legitimizes the space. So, yeah. Yeah, but, how, but I mean, uh, how many how many people have been hacked and lost their Bitcoin? I mean, I don't know, but is it is that something that's common? It's uh it, it's common enough. I mean, I don't know how I don't it's like rampant. I mean, it's happened where people have had exchanges where They've gotten wallets hacked on some of these exchanges. Because I'd um, say the government probably steals more U.S. dollars from us than could ever happen with Bitcoin. Oh, I think so. I mean, I think there's there's definitely instances of people getting hacked and losing certain coins and things. Um, not all Bitcoin. It's just random coins. But that's why you have a hardware wallet. It's offline. It's not connected to the Internet. And you protect your assets in a hardware and cold storage like a Ledger or a Tracer, one of, one of those, you know. Protect yourself. I mean, you just think about these credit card companies. They make so much money with uh, fraud management and stuff that right. they th th because they could easily like I've I've said many times. All you'd have to do is add a PIN number to a credit card transaction, and you you've protected it. Right. So they don't yeah. want to protect it. No, of course not. Of course not. Um. Well, we've got a lot more to get to today on the show. Um. But so today again, guys, five p.m. Eastern. Look for Bitcoin to explode in value. I wouldn't be surprised. Um, we see, I mean, I'm not, you know, I'm not a financial advisor. I'm not a prognosticator. But when you have an entire Reddit community that's about to buy $30 worth of Bitcoin in solidarity and support with El Salvador, the way that they're handing out $30 worth of Bitcoin to all of their citizens, um, I think it's a, I think it's a game changer. So look for Bitcoin prices to surge this afternoon absolutely the case thanks for subscribing to the channel you can also become a channel member by going to morninginvest.com join where you can stick it to the mainstream media and support independent journalism we're able to bring you the stories that you won't see on any of the major billionaire backed networks thanks so much we'll see you next time everyone